everyone, this is Paul McDermott from PMD Photography, and today we are going to cover frequency skin. <laughs> I can't even say it. Uh, skin um, touch-ups today. We're going to turn uh, this picture into this picture using a technique called frequency separation. Plus, I'm also going to be doing some dodging and burning and some highlights for the eyes, and show you a couple extra techniques that I have made into an action. Uh, that is called skin retouching, which will be available to everybody and anybody that subscribes to my YouTube channel and or shares the posted uh, tutorial on Facebook. Uh, what I have done is basically make an action that creates all of these um, layers for you with the correct, uh, uh, the correct, um, can't even think of the word, all well, the correct settings on them. So they're ready just to go in there and we're going to go over most of them, especially the frequency separation. So we're going to take this one here, turn it in to that. All right. Let's basically what frequency separation is, is it takes uh, an image and I'm assuming everybody who's uh, uh, learning this tutorial is well aware of clone stamping tools and and all that. They've done some basic touch-ups on the face, uh, so I'm not going to start explaining clone tools and patch tools in detail. I'm going to assume that everybody knows that. Frequency separation basically separates your image into a tone and a color layer and a detail layer, and each of them can be independently um, edited without affecting the other. And uh, you'll find there's a huge benefit when you're doing uh, clone stamping, it doesn't, if you're doing clone stamping for textures and you're uh, using this particular method, it uh, it just sticks with the textures. You have to think in tones and colors in it to, to edit in on one plane. On another plane, you have to think of just textures. So we're going to get right into it. So here's the procedure. So you start off with your background layer. And uh, again, I'm going to assume, it, since everybody's uh, probably uh, uh, watching an advanced tutorial, you probably are shot in RAW. Um, so I'm just going to do this tutorial based on a 16-bit um, channel. Um, if it's not, this action that I have will turn it into a 16-bit channel, so it's really you can't go wrong. So what you have to do is duplicate your background layer twice. You can go Command. J twice, uh, and I have renamed the first one low, is in low frequency, and the top one high, is in high frequency. So let's turn the top, the, the, again, these are the procedures that you have to go through to set up these layers. Create two layers, one low, one high. The low is going to be your tones and colors. The high is going to be the textures, and they're two completely separate layers. Turn the high off, because basically, we have to take the low channel and blur it. We are going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Basically, we are going to blur it until the texture is gone. And you can see colors and tones. So it's going to be different for every single picture. So you just keep going and going and going until you start seeing uh, the textures gone. And I'm going to keep going up. It's usually between... Uh, 8 and 15 percent. You can go a little higher, uh, usually about 9, so that's about right. In the action, uh, it'll stop here and let you pick that uh, that value before you uh, do any more. So just hit OK. It's the first one. You just, you just blur it to get rid of the texture. That's it. This one's a little trickier, um, but if you don't remember how to do it, it's in the action and you just hit the, hit the play button and it's all good. All right, so highlight that layer. You go to Image and Apply Image. Okay, your layer you pick is going to be low. So you're referencing that low layer. Leave your channel at RGB. You invert it. You ha have the blending mode to add and the scale to 2. Uh, so remember these, screen capture it, come back to it. Again, if you take the action, it's already done all for you, so you don't have to do anything. Hit OK. And now it looks just, that's a mess. This looks like a high pass filter. All right, so you have to turn it to linear light. 
Uh, and you'll see, basically, when they're on top of each other, it doesn't do anything to the uh, to the image at all. Um, so let's group these together. Go Command, click both of them, and you can uh, hit Group down here and put them in there. But I'd like to to go Command G, and it will put them in a group. And let's just call it a skin retouching. Did I spell that right? Yep. Okay. So you see, if you toggle this on and off, the image is 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 identical. Let's turn the low off, the tones and the colors, and you take a look at the image. Um, my bride is not going to want to see this, but this, <laughs> these are the details and these are the tones, the, or these are the uh, um, textures that we're going to be fixing. Let's keep it there um, for the time being. So I like to fix the textures first. So you have to think a bit differently. Um, in, you, it is the same process as you would normally do uh, retouching. Clone uh, um, your spot healing brush, your clone stamp tool, you do exactly the same thing. But the, the difference is, is that when you're sampling areas with, with the, the, this, these layers here, it, is a, it, doesn't, it doesn't reference the, tone, the, the colors and the tones. It just references texture. So if you were to uh, here, let me do. This is going to look really bad. She's she's going to hate this. But this this uh, this really demonstrates. Don't even remember this one. It's not a big deal. But um, we are referencing all the texture. We're going to be fixing all the textures in here. And this is a really really harsh way to look at it. And I won't even do that because it looks terrible. Okay, so we're gonna start with the textures. I've watched some tutorials where people start with the tones, but I've just found I like to work with it with the textures first. So um, I'm going to use a spot healing brush. I found that proximity match works better than content aware in this in this case because I'm not doing any lines. I'm going to be doing spots. I'm leaving that mole there. It should be left there. This is is I don't like taking things like that from people. It's part of them, so we're going to leave it there. So basically, I just want to go and uh, uh, look at blemishes like this. So I am going to start doing these, and I'm probably going to just fast forward this for you so you don't have to listen to me. Actually, I'll talk for a little bit here and explain what I'm doing. So the first thing that I do is take <clears throat> Spot Healing Brush, Proximity Match, and just go as you normally would. This, there's, this is when I first got introduced to frequency separation. It was a little overwhelming, and I thought this is going to be very difficult. I'm gonna, I'm not going to do the whole body because I think we'll just stick to the face because uh, the procedure is, is going to translate from the face to the rest of the body anyway. And I don't think we need to be doing all of that. So as in any face retouching that I do, I will start off with all the little blemishes. You could spend hours doing this. You could be really sloppy. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the hairs at the moment. So we've kind of got rid of most of the small ones. Let's kind of go bananas here. And it doesn't look like much, but if we turn that off and turn it on, it's a pretty big difference. <laughs> So now we want to address the lines on her eyes, and I always, I always try to edit. Well, not I always try. I edit to what I remember this person looking like in person. Photographs tend to uh, bring out some of the details in people that they don't necessarily like. Uh, so I don't change anybody. I edit to what they look like to me when I meet them. So I'll go from the spot healing brush, and I will go to the clone stamp tool, and. See, there's a. You also have to make make sure this is really critical that you're sampling current layer because you do, if you do current and below, and sample alt, you're gonna get some nasty, nasty stuff. So that has to be on current layer. You only do this layer. So let's take the clone stamp tool, and I'm gonna be a little sloppier than I normally would because you can go down every single line. And the difference that this is doing here. Then the clone stamp tool, as you would regularly do without frequency separation, is it is only looking at textures. It is not looking at colors whatsoever. So you can see um, 
it's keeping it's it's keeping the texture just great. So I'm going to make the uh, sample circle a bit bigger. Hit Alt and then click to sample down here, and just kind of drag across. Let's turn the opacity down again. The opacity obviously means the strength of the what you're sampling being applied to there. Oops, let's take down here and just run it across. You don't want to make it, you've got to leave something there. So that's, that looks good. And just, what you want to do is when you get used to doing this technique, try and uh, go and do it the regular way and you're going to hate it. I, I can't even, I can't do it anymore. So let's do this side. We don't have to do much for this side. So Alt, Sample. And again, we're using the Clone Stamp tool. So I've gone from using a spot healing brush to the Clone Stamp tool. And this is kind of the uh, progression that I'm comfortable with. Just drag it under. And you'll see by looking at it, it looks like we've done nothing to it until we turn off the layer, turn on the layer, and all the texture and everything is kept there. We're going to take care of these small lines up here. So let's sample again. Let's put this up a little bit. It tends to really. And again, I'm going to assume everyone knows how to use the clone stamp tool. Because somebody that doesn't know this coming in on a tutorial like this is just going to be ugh, blown away. So let's do this a little bit, just one small pass. And you really want to make it look like nothing has been done to the image. So if you were to look at this image so far, you'd think, well, there's not much done to it until you actually see the difference, which is fairly significant. And these uh, techniques you can apply to the entire image, which you should, which we're not going to do. So let's just call the textures um, done. It looks pretty good. So now we're going to go on to the colors and tones. She's got a really good face, so there's not. We're going to get picky um, in manipulating this. So what I first do is okay. Look at the color differences between here and there. Um, what I want to do is there's a there's no real strict way to do this. There's basically three tools that I use, and is in Photoshop. There's no one way to do anything. There is a million ways to do one thing, so you have to just keep practicing over and over and find out uh, which way is going to work for you. So let's start down here. Um, Again, there, there's not much much wrong with her at all, uh, but that's just even all this out here. And what I start with is the lasso tool. Click the lasso tool. <laughs> that's another like a swear word. And click the lasso tool and get about a five pixel uh, feather. And you can be sloppy here. And what you want to do is kind of um, marquee around contrasted areas like that to that and this to there. So you marquee around a contrasted area with the lasso tool and then what you want to do is blur it. It is not going to blur the texture because remember um, frequency separation separates the tones and the colors from the texture. So we, we go and blur this. It is not going to affect the texture whatsoever. So let's crank this up. So you really can't see, you can't tell much, and that's pretty much, a, everything is very subtle when you're doing it. Okay, when it starts to go black, as you can see there, you've gone too far. So bring it on down. Very subtle, but hit OK anyway. Okay, now what you've done, you've also set your, uh, where are we? Um, this filter, if you hit uh, Command F, you have already set what that Gaussian blur is. So if you go Command F, you don't have to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, blah, blah, blah. You can just hit Command F 
repeatedly. And it will keep adding that Gaussian blur. So just circle, just go Command F, F. Okay, you can see it change there. And it's a very subtle change. And just keep going around the entire image. And if they don't change, we'll fix that in a bit. And see the differences between that dark and that light there. And let's just kind of wrap around that. Command or Command F, just keep hitting F, and you can see the subtle changes. Basically, what it's doing is smoothing the dark and the light very subtly, and it does not affect the textures whatsoever. Remember, because we've got an upper layer of texture and a lower layer of, of uh, tones and colors. So let's just zoom around that. We're getting picky here because there's not much wrong. Oops, there's not much wrong with her face. Again, Command F, repeatedly hit it. And this technique is also great. Look at her arm down here. When you've got a little bit of a red rash or there's uh, blue veins or something from maybe she's cold. So watch when you just lasso around here. And then go Command F, 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 F. Okay, well, it's not doing a whole hell of a lot, so, oops. We will, that's why I say there's 8 million ways to do something in Photoshop. Let's actually go back to the texture and take care of these uh, uh, freckles here just because we can. So go back up to texture. You cannot change these things in, in uh, colors and tones. Go back to texture. And normally what I would do with this one is just go back to spot healing brush on proximity match. Fire off a few more. I have a general um, method of how I do things, uh, but I do tend to go back and forth. You've probably looked at your own images too, and you look at it, you do some more, you go back, you do some more. Oops, okay. So she's starting to look better. So now looking back at this, I can see it's a little dark in there. I don't want it to be. It looks a little patchy. Um, that's a little... Uh, contrasted down hit down there's a little contrast so I'm going to use the lasso tool as much as I can because there's another technique after this that I use if this doesn't solve the problem for me command F remember what I'm doing by command F oops and I did I was wondering okay look at this okay this is what happens a Gaussian blur on the texture up here and look what it did exactly what I didn't want it to do so let's go back to two steps in history and then Click on the skin that try that you learn by your mistakes so go back down to the tones and colors and I'm gonna do command F and remember I'm gonna repeat it over and over it's just your last uh, setting of Gaussian blur that you chose or any filter if you if you do another filter it'll it'll be up there so we're just using Gaussian blur so I can go command F command F that's just Really, you're not going to hurt too much by doing this. See, if I if I go under her eyes here, and I go Command F, what it's going to do is just make a smoother gradient from the dark to the light. See it there? It's just so subtle. It's, it's perfect. Do it down here. We're not taking it right out. It's just very subtle. Okay, and you see we're having a hard time with that up there. So I'm going to show you another technique. So now let's just go back and see the original. Oops. There's what we've done so far. There's the original and it looks great. All the textures are kept. They're they're great. That's what I love about this um, this technique. All right. So let's do one more. Go to Oops, brush. And you're going to go down to one called Mixer Brush Tool. It's a fairly new uh, tool, and it's you wouldn't think that uh, it would be used for this, but I've been using it, and it's it's really, really good for blending colors very subtly. And again, not affecting the texture, because we're going to be doing um, the work down in the tones and the colors down here. So again, go to uh, the brush set go down to B. Alternately, you can go, you hit the B key, but if you hit select in B, 
it'll rotate you through all of these ones. So stop when you get to mixer brush. Mixer brush. Remember these settings up here. Just memorize them. Um, I've done a bit of research on what they mean and uh, for lack of a better word, just remember them. Make sure that this is toggled off. Um, it's it's uh, cleaning the brush. Uh, load the brush after each stroke. Whatever. It works. Leave that one on, that one off, or whichever they might be. Have the settings 20, 20, 20, 30. Uh, what this does is hold on a tone or sort of luminance that you want to bring somewhere else. So I want to bring some of this lighter um, tone into the darker one here to even it out a little bit because we obviously we weren't able to do it with the lasso tool. So I like to do it with the mixer brush tool. So you want to click and hold on the area you're sampling. You're not hitting the alt key, you're not hitting any key. You just hover your mouse over it and have a hardness of low because you don't want sharp uh, you don't want sharp sharp corners or sharp edges or anything. So hold and click and drag over. You can probably see it there. Click and drag over, click and drag over. And you see how subtle that is? That I'm just dragging this light. Let's make this a bit smaller here. It's very subtle. You might not even see the difference, but let's go back to history to the first one and look at the difference. How nicely that was taken out. And oh God, we can keep going. I mean, I think this is a great, great tool. So I want some of that light down here, drag it in, and some of that dark over here. Um, eh, whatever, just smooth it out. It's good for bringing highlights under the eyes. You can drag some brightness into there. And again, you can keep going and going and going. We still got to fix that right there. So I'm looking at this and this looks pretty damn good to me. So this part right here, we're not able to fix it in colors and tones. It's more of a texture, as you can see. So let's go to texture. I should call it texture, but it's high frequency. And how would you fix that? Well, there's a ton of ways. We <laughs> Let's go to clone stamp tool. Select texture very close to it. Alt, sample your point, drag down. Got rid of it. There's a little one there. Alt, sample your point. You always want to sample a point with a texture similar to what you're going to be painting on. And sweet. That looks pretty good. So there's before and after. So I've watched a lot of tutorials on frequency separation and this is as as far as I ever needed to learn um, and I've been playing with this for a while and it's uh, the techniques that I've showed you here are basically the best of everything that I've watched uh, and learned on it and I've added my own this is what I want this is why I want to give away this action uh, because it's not just frequency separation it's kind of a, a kit of, of uh, facial touching up because if you look at the other picture it looks similar but you'll see there's some highlights in the eyes and there's a few different things in there. Do you see there's a there's a color gradient in here uh, that is not in the other one? Um, and with everything that I have, okay, let's go back to, I'll show you what's in this little kit here that I made. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. Curves are in here and I'll show you what I do with it uh, to add a color gradient. Uh, you don't have to do eye color. You don't have to do a global saturation. You don't have to do catch lights. You don't have to do dodge and burn. It's all it's all um, totally up to you. Darks and lights. I'll be honest with you. Um, I just kind of made this one up, and I'll show you what it is. It's kind of a selective contrast, and uh, um, I haven't really found a tutorial that uh, that shows what it is, but I kind of made it up, so it's kind of cool, and I'll show you. So they are similar. You could be happy with that one, and I'd be happy with that one. But I want to lighten up these eyes. So I'm going to do two more, one more layer here, and I'm going to this. I'm going to make a dodge and a burn layer, and these are non-destructive dodge and burn layers. So create a blank layer, and you want to edit, fill, 50% gray. Doesn't look good, does it? 
turn it to soft light and you see it there's nothing it doesn't make any difference duplicate that layer uh, command J make this one burn call it burn call this one dodge dodge is lightning things burn is burning things and the keyboard shortcut is O and it'll take you to either dodge burn or sponge and again if you hit O and you go shift O it'll toggle you through and you can see up here which one you have dodge burn sponge dodge <laughs> spongebob uh, so we're gonna start off with some dodging which is highlights and again totally totally up to you but we're just gonna lighten up some stuff here just for the hell of it uh, so hit dodge and we're going to select dodge and Hit the right keys here. I'm going to zoom into her eyes because I want to brighten up the whites in her eyes. So let's make our circle smaller. And we're going to, maybe let's stick with midtones first. Keep your exposure kind of low because dodge and burn tends to uh, be pretty, pretty aggressive and always protect your tones. So I'm just going to click in here. Again, I'm going to be fairly, fairly sloppy. And see, it just brightens up her eyes. So not only can we work on the eyes with dot, with, with this dot, let's take it down into our group here. Um, not only can you do dodge in the eyes, let's make our little thing bigger here. We can do around the face, like anywhere, where you think you might want a bit more brightness into it so it doesn't it looks like there's not much done but if we turn it off and turn it on you can see uh, we could keep going on that but for the sake of tutorial let's keep it short um, there's not much more to explain about dodge unless you're doing a dodge tutorial I'm just brightening up some areas of face burn um, let's choose burn and let's choose let's stick with midtones exposure very low and burns you, you uh, it's nice to do around the edges of the face and under the chin and that will give a lot more depth to her face just some on the cheekbones just be very subtle with it under there oops like that. and again I'm being really really sloppy but you will see before, after. We've just taken all the blotches up there and made that. You could call that done, but we're not going to. Uh, two more layers. And these are my global darkening and global brightening. Um, so fill one with darkening is going to be black. Duh. And let's edit fill and lightning is going to be white of course so let's start with this one here um pretty bright what are we going to do double click on it on the right hand side we're going to bling bling bring up the layer style so what you want to do is we are going to be adjusting this down here so when we blend if underlying layer is towards white so you'll see that we're bringing the black slider towards what is white in the, the underlying layer. But that's pretty harsh. See, these are the kind of the highlights that I want on her face or globally. And that's one reason why we put a layer mask, which I'll show you. So how do we make that softer? Crank it all the way to the end. Hold the Option key down. Keep it held down with whatever fingers available. Click on there, and you'll see that it is softer and I'll show you why I like this little technique here we can see if I bring down the opacity I'm doing a I'm doing a general lightning you could do some really cool effects so I can I can lighten the entire image in some kind of angelic look but I want to localize it more so if I start dragging this one up you'll see that it's really localizing and let's leave it at there. 
and let's say I want whatever it's done all there to be brighter. It's a little harsh, so basically, simply pull down the opacity. Doing Gaussian blur is going to do nothing. So you're wanting this very subtle. You can't even tell that I've done anything until we turn it off. It's very subtle, but it creates what's called a contrast ratio between one side of the face and the other, which just adds for a little drama. Um, if I added a layer mask, um, I can uh, hit my brush button. Ooh, let's make sure it is brush and turn opacity 100. And it added a little lightness down here I didn't want, so I can just basically paint it out. See what I'm doing here? I'm just painting out what I didn't want to be lightened. I kind of want it just in her face. Okay, so uh, in sure form, click the top one. And instead of dragging this this way, we are going to be dragging the whites. And you see if we it's concentrating on the blacks. So again, hold the option key down. Keep it held down. Click on that. Drag. And you'll see what's black. And by not by leaving that there, it's very global. And the more I drag this way, it's become very local. And this is a matter of taste. Hit OK. Again, play with that one. And bring the opacity down to make it more realistic. It's very subtle, but I don't want darkness in our eyes because we've spent some time lightening them up. So I'll apply a layer mask. And I'll hit black to, to eliminate eliminate what is revealing in that and just click over her eye to bring that back. So we've added some very subtle, you can do it in curves and curves and uh, and do the same thing, but I find with this one with the layer mask, it's, it's really uh, much more exact, I think. So I've left that in my action that you guys can have. Okay, next one, I am going to do a hue and saturation just ridiculous amount of saturation but I'm going to invert this layer to to kill it basically turn it black you can edit fill black or the keyboard shortcut command I and it will turn that black and then again I'm assuming I don't have to explain this if you're watching tutorial like this why do I want to do that I'm simply just gonna paint, go to the brush, hit X to toggle between black and white. I'm just putting a little bit of color in her eye and I can probably bring that down. That's way too much, just to be very subtle. Very subtle. Okay, what was the other one we had in there? Oh, uh, catch lights. Catch lights, they, they bring out eyes. Um, I, I used a flash in this picture, but I pointed the flash at the ceiling, so there's not much of a catch light, but we're gonna add them anyway. You don't have to, it doesn't matter. Add another layer, catch lights, really simple. You can get complicated and, and draw um, soft boxes and stuff, but we're gonna keep it simple here because I, I'm kind of make giving you an ideas to go on. So we're gonna put two little white dots here. Click, click, and we put catch lights in there. They're a little, a little bright. So we want to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, because if they're too sharp, they're going to look ridiculous. If they're too blurred, so let's bring that down. And about there, I'm going to move them a tiny bit. And we can bring the opacity down just to make it more realistic. So look at the difference between before and after. Okay, again, that could be done, but I'm going to add another level of curves. And this is what I like to just, I just remember this. I'm going to do a whole other tutorial on curves and color balance and and uh, and everything, but you might just want to remember this um, to get a certain feel. It's it's uh, what fashion photographers use um, uh, that I learned, and I, I I love it. I 
go down to the blue channel. So all you're affecting is the blue channel. If you're familiar with curves, this is darks, this is lights. I just push up some blue into the darks. It's a very cinematic look. If you ever watch movies, you'll see, if you look at the blocks, you'll see blues in there. And if you look at the highlights and the midtones, you'll see yellows in there. I have a hard time watching movies now or TV shows because that is all I see is lighting and colors. And the opposite of blue is yellow. So if we just stick in this one channel of blue, drag up the blacks, pull up, pull the highlights, pull yellows into them because the opposite of blue is yellow. So once we go past this fictitious line in the middle, well, it's not really fictitious, drag it down. We're adding yellow to the highlights. We're adding blues to the uh, darks. So again, this is all in the action that I'm going to be giving you guys. Um, you don't have to use it. Not at all. If you don't like that, just leave it like that. But uh, I like that look. You see, there's a bit of a dare. I kind of like the new one better. I do like the new one better. <laughs> Uh, all right, so there's only one more thing that I have in there. Catch lights, hue saturation, curves. Well, hue saturation, um, I added, um, where are we here? I added another layer of hue saturation in there. Just, I like it a little bit desaturated. So I've got a global saturation in the action, which will bring it down. And again, total, total preference. You don't have to use it. And sharpening. Here's a quick sharpening. Um, you can flatten this whole thing, go filter, sharp, uh, sharp and unsharp mask. Um, eh, kind of dumb. I want to make one layer, one layer of the entire, I want to flatten this whole thing basically, but I don't want to flatten it. So click on the top one and go shift alt, shift alt command E. And it will think and it will create a layer on top that is a combination of all these so just remember shift alt command e and it will basically not flatten it but it will create a flat image of all the layers in one so how is that going to sharpen it go to filter other high pass and basically you're going to take this radius down until you see the outlines and what you can see is what's going to be sharpened. What you can't see is not going to be sharpened. So the lower we go down, if we go to zero, it's going to go. So you just kind of want to bring it up until you can start seeing a little bit of texture and you hit OK. So now the very last thing you want to do, change the blending mode to soft light. So there is without sharpening, and they're sharpening and that's my favorite way in Photoshop to uh, sharpen so there you have it that's that's it that's before and that's after and if you play around with that you can get this image done pretty quick you could spend hours on it you can do it in 10 minutes um, have any questions uh, reach me on my YouTube page subscribe and uh, that is it I think I'll do another one on curves pretty soon Enjoy and contact me if you want that action. Thanks, guys.